Greetings, our viewers of Global Buddhist Congregation, Dhamma Discourse Online. Today we are fortunate to have a chance to listen to Dhamma, which will be delivered by Venerable Ashira Wachira Nako. He is currently staying at Wat Nagpro. Venerable Ashira Wachira Nako is originally from Nepal, but he's been living in Thailand for 14 years. He finished his bachelor degree from Mahajulalungon Ratchavitriya University, which is the Buddhist university in Thailand. And he's currently studying for Master of Arts at Dhammasad University. Today we will hear Dhamma discourse on happiness for householders. I would give the mic to Venerable Ashira. Thank you very much for accepting our invitation to join our program, Venerable. Please. First of all, let's all pay the homage to the Buddha. Namo tassa pakavato arahato sama samputasa. Namo tassa pakavato arahato sama samputasa. Na mo tassa pakavato arahato sama samputasa. My homage to the Blessed One, the Exalted One, and the Superiorly Enlightened One. So my Dhamma greetings to all the viewers who are watching from home online. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, appreciate our thanks the Global Buddhist Congregation, uh, led by Dr. Harshdeep Kamble and uh, Mrs. Rachana Kamble, and also all the GBC staffs from Thailand, uh, Mrs. Semsuk and Mrs. Apindya. So, I will talk about household happiness for householders or happiness for household livings let's say. So we know that as a Buddhist we know about basic things like five precepts or Panchasila that the most venerable Prajan Sambun has discussed last time and it is known as the basic morality or basic virtues that every Buddhist has to practice in their daily life. But today my topic on happiness for householders or happiness for household living will be also the basic Dhamma teachings that the Buddha he himself taught to the lay householders let's say and uh, among different teachings one of the well-known teachings is called the Ditta Tamikata 4 or in easy words we can also say that it's a teaching conducive to man's happiness. Uh, this is the teachings that leads to the happiness for the lay householder peoples. In the time of the Buddha or in the ancient times of the Buddha, uh, a man named Dikajanu once went to the Buddha and asked, O oh, Venerable Sir, we are just an ordinary people. We are ordinary man who have wife and children to look after how can we practice your teachings could you please teach us some of your doctrines so that we can practice in our daily life and uh, at that time the Buddha taught about these four conducive happiness for the lay people which is known as Ditta Tamikata four so in the four Dittatamikata, the, the first uh, teaching in the Dittatamikata that Buddha taught to Dika Janu was about Uttana Sampada. He said that one must be skillful or one must be earnest, one must be very uh, proficient, one must use very proficient effort, let's say like that. So that he taught to Dika Janu that if a man works with right effort in his work without being 
laziness or without being lazy in his life he work he puts all his effort in his work without being lazy even his employers and employees will like him or let's say uh, working honestly when he's working and this is the first thing that uh, a lay people must have which is a uh, different from a uh, monkhood life because lay people must uh, educate themselves and work in their daily life so if a man works hard then this is the first step of the success and this is the first step that leads to happiness and in the second step he talked about araka sampada which means to be happy of what you have uh, found or what you've righteously accumulated so for example let's say that you've worked hard enough to earn your salary or your money let's say you work very hard you educated yourself you worked very hard to earn salary and you are happy of earning that salary or, or the money right so the next thing is uh, the buddha taught about araka sampada the word araka means to protect or to safeguard what you found it also means that to protect your wealth from thieves or getting theft by anyone because you have found the wealth the property that you've righteously worked for and the third one is kalayana mitata or kalayana mitra the word kalayana is uh, normally means in pali a uh, beautiful right and uh, mitra normally means friends or com company or companionship let's say like that and uh, to live a happy life one should also have a very good company or very good friends who are skillful like one self who are intelligent clever and who can lead you to the rightful path to uh, be success in life and the last one is sama jivikata which means you need you need to be satisfied or be reasonable right if you are a poor person you cannot be an extravagant person you cannot use your money that you've accumulated to use in uh, some unnecessary things let's say like that and if you are a rich person then you have to also be very careful to use uh, the wealth that you've found right you need to uh, use very sufficiently let's say you are living a very sufficient life right so these are the four things that the buddha taught to diga janu for living happy life or life that leads to happiness which is known as ditta tamikata right and there are four kinds of ditta tamikata as the first one is uttana sampada the second one is araka sampada the third one is kalayana mitata and the last one is samajivita so besides this uh, teaching he also expanded the dhamma in another four as well by uh, expanding to the Karavasa Dhamma four so this is also one of the teachings uh, that was taught to uh, lay people who want to live a happy life or who want to live a life of happiness let's say and uh, this Dhamma is also known as the Karavasa Dhamma four and uh, apart from the Ditta Tamikata he mentioned this Dhamma to Dika Janu and he also uh, expounded the same Dhamma to another level or let's say he got in more detail by uh, delivering his Dhamma to Dika Janu on the Karavasa Dhamma 4 right the first one in the Karavasa Dhamma 4 is Sattha or Sattha one should have faith or confidence in morality spiritual and uh, intellectual virtues let's say right if one has faith or confidence in doing things in let's say uh, rightful things not things whatever you like or you're passionate about one should think very thoroughly to practice in the daily life 
uh, which is satta or the faith or the confidence in easy way let's say and uh, one should be confident in spiritual or morality or intellectual virtue so that one can live a happy life so after the satta or the faith uh, it leads to the second one which is sila right after we've talked about the morality uh, the uh, spiritual virtues now it's uh, it's about the sila which is which is the basic thing for the buddhist people so sila normally means the precepts right or in in thailand we also use the word term normal because it is believed that uh, sila is for normal people or people who don't have sila are abnormal we believe like that but uh, the normal and abnormal is not in term of being crazy person or normal person but buddha believes that if you practice the sila in your daily life it is uh, the basic term or the basic or fundamental term that a buddhist needs to have in their daily life so what is sila as you've already heard from venerable ajahn pramahasambhun last time about the five precepts in their daily life right or pancha sila so the first thing is abstain from destroying or harming life uh, stealing abstaining from stealing or theft right or conducting adultery is the third one the fourth one is uh, using falsehood words using vulgar words or any words that can harm other people as well and the last one is abstaining from intoxicant drinks so let's say these are the most basic teachings or the basic moral virtues that a buddhist can practice in their daily life if one can practice a sila or the basic five precepts in daily life one can lead to a happy life as well so apart from sila uh, let's move on to the third one which mentioned about chakha chakha is uh, let's say conducting uh, charity or being charitable or generosity having generosity uh, it's not uh, buddha did not uh, supported those people who only accumulate the wealth to for themselves and not share with others especially the time like this this is the time or the crisis or the pandemic time of covid-19 and people are suffering all over the world with this pandemic and uh, for example let's give you an example in thailand many generous people a lots and lots of generous people in temples in different temples around thailand people come and Uh, distribute free foods to people in need right this is also a way to conduct jaka or being charitable right one does not need to accumulate or collect only the wealth for oneself only but when it is needed for other people one should also sacrifice things or money or whatever you can do to other people or to support the society you can also uh, be generous charitable it's not only uh, making merits with monks in temples you can make merits or do charitable things in different ways and uh, apart from the chakha the last one will be panya right so normally panya or pragya in sanskrit or panya in uh, pali means the wisdom the intellectual that you have so why is it why the panya is needed and when you have to live a happy life because uh, this is one of the very uh, most uh, important thing that you need to practice because you need to have panya to be free from suffering right to be to and normally let's say what the buddha has taught was about uh, to attain the enlightenment or nibbana we normally uh, one person or uh, one normally needs to have panya but in terms of living a happy life for householders panya is very important things because when you are suffering or you are in a bad situation you need to have panya to take care of yourself right to ha- to be responsible let's say because panya is the one that can abandon things like lobha dosha and moha because without panya you can cannot solve things that you are in crisis right 
when you have crisis you need to use Banya to solve these problems as well so this these are all the four tamma or four karavasa tamma that the Buddha taught uh, or expand the details from the Ditta Tamikata included with uh, the first one is Sattha which means faith or confidence the second one is Sila having morality virtues uh, and the third one is Chaka to be charitable or generous and the last one is Panya the wisdom that we, we all need to have to uh, be responsible and to uh, let's say to find the solution of that problem uh, the Buddha was also aware of social and economic problems of people so he believed that people are uh, for lay people let's say especially to lay people to householders they need to be happy in their life one should be aware of their social and economic problems as well so he also I gave example let's say he also went in details about saving monies or wealth let's say in Sikala Vada Sutra he told to uh, the young man Sik Sikala that uh, if one needs to save money or one needs to be uh, not be m much extravagant let's say like that he told that uh, one should use one-fourth of his money in his daily expenses uh, put half of his money uh, in business or whatever job they are doing let's say business in nowadays you can say business and the last one is a one-fourth of that money to put for an emergency so see you can see that Buddha was uh, really aware or very aware of people's social and economic life because he believed that if people uh, was poor it can lead to hatred cruelty and all those problems that has been causing to the world so this is also mentioned in Kuta Danta Sutra and also Sigalovada Sutra as well so after he told this young man Sigala that okay if you want to be sufficient living person or you want to live a happy life then as I just mentioned earlier that one should be diligent or let's say skillful which is also mentioned in the four titatamikata right one should be one should have uttana sampada which means to be skillful to be diligent while working without laziness so this is also an important thing so that's why buddha was aware of all the poverty he saw because this this can lead to all the uh, let's say the the havoc that can cause something with cruelty hatred right or let's say even the theft of robberies that have been going around the world this is because they are in part of the falsehood they have been shown to wrong way and uh, another problem is that due to poverty so poverty is also one of the thing mentioned by Buddha so uh, he believed that if let's say during the time of the Buddha the kings right the kings need to provide grains and all the facilities to farmers and cultivators or to provide capital to traders or to bi businessmen and one who worked for others must have adequate wages right if you could not pay them there could be problem in living their life so it might cause to many problems like robberies killing cruelty hatred and all those things that we can see nowadays so he mentioned as uh, the happiness of person also comes from the uh, sufficient way of living or let's say economic if the people's economic is not good and uh, they can't live to survive their life then they also can start causing havoc or causing problems in the society or in social let's say as I just mentioned about the Karavasa Dhamma 4 uh, earlier let's say in the ancient time of the Buddha or the time of the Buddha uh, the great banker Anatta Pindika merchant went to the Buddha asking that uh, how could an ordinary man or ordinary family live a happy life so the Buddha 
also taught another happiness teachings, right? The teachings that lead to happiness, let's say, to the Anatta Pindika merchant, saying that if you want to live a happy life, let's say, or for ordinary people, one should live in happiness in four things. So this, in this terms, uh, in let's say in Buddhist terms, it is mentioned as uh, the four sukha, right? Normally, uh, sukha means the happiness itself, uh, the pleasure that we all have. And he told that uh, the first thing one should have is uh, ati sukha. Normally, ati sukha is about happiness of possession, right? Possessing wealth, property, or any kind of things that you have or let's say any materialistic things even though uh, Lord Buddha did not taught us to live in materialistic world but let's say for a happy and welfare our economic welfare life uh, the Buddha also supported because he said that these things are one of the important things to live a happy household life so the first one is Atti Sukha as I just mentioned Ati Sukha is, let's say in easy words, it's joy of possession, right? Possessing uh, wealth or money or whatever kind of property you have and you, you are happy of having. For example, uh, I can give you an example of, let's say, you are a parent and you take care of your children, you uh, grow them, you teach them good things, you provide them uh, delicious foods and you send them to good schools right to have a good future in their life so after they complete their degree or let's say uh, any degree BA, MA or PhD and after that they go to seek for a job they earn money and they earn money to let's say support their family which is also a kind of happiness so Ati Sukha here means uh, you are happy of what you've earned but earning here doesn't mean doing wrong things like selling weapons right human trafficking this is this is totally wrongful thing that uh, which is against the Buddha's instruction but uh, the rightful thing yes means which is not against the Buddha's instruction and one can uh, live a happy life or let's say a rightful livelihood a rightful uh, job that does not harm to anyone uh, that does not makes anyone suffer even yourself as well it is about earning money or earning any wealth with your own skill whatever profession except the wrongful deeds as I mentioned and you're happy of what you have found you're happy that you earned money with the rightful job and doing righteously and after you have Atisukha uh, which is let's say the first uh, materialistic or economic welfare happiness it leads to Poka Sukha normally uh, Poka Sukha is you are happy of using the money the wealth that you've earned righteously right if you have earned those that money or those uh, let's say the money you've earned from wrongful it is not something to be very happy you know say you sell drugs or you do human trafficking this is uh, the wrongful act or uh, against the teaching of the Buddha or the Buddha's instruction let's say and what is Bhoka Sukha here? Bhoka Sukha normally means you're happy to use that money with yourself your family friends relatives and also doing the meritorious deeds right these are all the rightful deeds that one must do for example in Thailand many people uh, who does not have time to go to temples each week let's say uh, because due to, maybe due to their, their work right uh, they don't have time someone also does does not understand uh, well about Buddhism and whenever they have time they go to make merits let's say in Thailand a lot of people go and make merits in uh, Saturday and Sunday in weekends let's say and this is also a kind of rightful deed or rightful actions that one can conduct in their daily life or meritorious deeds let's say you're happy of what you found and you're happy of using 
uh, fulfilling that thing with your family, with yourself, or your relatives, or anyone who you love or like, right? And uh, the third one is the Ananya Sukha. So this is the third happiness in uh, the four Sukhas. Ananya Sukha is about uh, you are happy because you are free from debt, right? Normally, nowadays, people ha are anxious, people have anxiety due to they are indebted to many things. You are indebted you, because you cannot pay in the installment of your cars. You, you are uh, debted, you are an, an, uh, you're anxious, let's say, you are, you are full of anxiety because you cannot pay the debt of your credit cards, let's say. This is all the debt. But once you've paid all those debt in your life, you feel very free, you feel very uh, happy in your life. So this is, uh, so the Buddha is also mentioned that uh, a person or people uh, who do not have uh, the debt are one of the happy people as well. And the fourth one, apart from all these three, is one of the most uh, greatest one, let's say, is Anavaja Sukha. Anavaja Sukha here means you are happy because you did not conduct any evil deeds in your whole life. You always walk according to the path of Buddhist instruction. Uh, you, you have never done any wrongful actions in your life and you are proud, you are happy of doing that. And you have to maintain that good deeds for your whole life, right? And uh, whenever you think about that uh, good deeds, uh, rightful act, you're always happy. So this is one of the greater than any three preceding that I mentioned was Ati Sukha, Poka Sukha, uh, Ananya Sukha, right? These are, uh, the last one is even greater. So when someone do good, right? When you help people who are in need, you are happy because you put all your heart, all your mind to support others. You are also using the generosity as I mentioned in uh, the Karavasa Dhamma 4 right so last one is to be happy from whatever good deeds you have conducted in your life and you are proud of that happiness so this is one of the greatest happiness among all the three as mentioned before So before I end my Dhamma talk today, I would like to conclude all the teachings that I have just delivered to all the viewers who are watching online. Uh, and uh, today I just mentioned to everyone who is watching this about the happiness for householders. As we know that uh, we have different kinds of happiness as Lord Buddha mentioned. We have uh, mundane happiness and let's say super mundane happiness. In these two happinesses, uh, the Buddha prays uh, the second one, which is super mundane happiness, right? Or we say uh, Lokuttara Sukha in Pali, or whatever you can say. It is to attain the highest state or highest goal in Buddhism, uh, which is known as Nibbana. However, he also did not abandon the mundane Sukha because he was aware that for the household people or householders, who live their ordinary life they need to have mundane sukha to live a happy and prosperous life as well and as i mentioned today earlier the first one was about uh, the titta tamikata four and uh, start, secondly i mentioned about uh, the karavasa dhamma four but one should have uh, satta which is faith or confidence one should have sila or precepts uh, to get attached or let's say mental support uh, or five precepts to support their daily life or morality virtues or, or whatever you can say like uh, spiritual or intellectual virtues as well and third one is chaka which is once one also needs to have a charitable mind uh, one needs to be generous in terms of uh, living a happy purposive life and the last one is Pandya. One needs to have a wisdom to take care of all the problems, not creating problems, right? And uh, finally, I also mentioned about the four Sukhas, right? Starting by Atti Sukha, the happiness that is caused from what you've earned righteously. It can be wealth, property, or anything that you've earned righteously. 
The second one is Poka Sukha. You are happy because uh, you are happy that you used all the wealth, all the uh, money, let's say, that you've earned righteously with yourself, your family, your relatives, or whoever you are, uh, who you love. And the third one is Ananya Sukha. You are happy because you do not, you are free of debt, let's say, like that, or uh, you don't have any debt. When people are indebted, they normally have anxiety and which is a kind of suffering as well which can lead to different kinds of mental problems or also physical problems so if you do not have any debt or if you are free from debt it is also a kind of happiness that Lord Buddha mentioned and uh, and the last one is one of the greatest of all which is Anavaja Sukha which is even the greater than all the three is to not cause suffering or not harming other people let's say uh, to live happy life without conducting evil deeds doing only rightful things according to the Buddhist instructions let's say and all these things that I've mentioned today leads to happiness you can also adapt or apply these in your lives uh, starting from the five precepts let's say uh, for uh, being a good Buddhist one should uh, practice from the morality first right one should practice from the five precepts and if you are lay people let's say uh, most of them who are listening are lay people or householders and uh, uh, you also you might not have time to go to temples all temples or monasteries to make merits all the time but you uh, have a kind mind or uh, generous mind to listen Dhamma uh, provided by the global Buddhist congregation which is very helpful and generous thing that you can uh, that let's say a very good opportunity that you've found and uh, not only from me but also from other venerables who have come uh, some uh, delivered very excellent talks which is very helpful in your daily life so you and uh, you can also practice what I've taught or what I've delivered today to you is to be happiness there are many ways to be happy in life but these are the normal teachings or let's say the basic norms that the Buddha has uh, taught to the lay people so before I end my talk today uh, I hope everyone will stay safe and peaceful and before I go I would like to bless all the viewers who are watching uh, by the power of the triple gems, the Buddha, the Dhamma and the Sangha, I would like to bless all the viewers to be happy, to be peaceful, cheerful and live peace and prosperous life and also adapt the teachings or the guidance of the Buddha in their daily life. Pavatu sapa mangalang rakantu sabha devata sabha buddha nubhavena sabha dhamma nubhavena sabha sangha nubhavena sada soti bhavantu te Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Thank you very much, Venerable Ashira Wachiratnako. That was a lovely teaching. I really enjoyed that uh, Karavasadamma, which I remember. I like to remember all of it very well. Uh, in which you started with Sata, Sata, which is the confidence. For the Buddhists, uh, we have to have confidence, particularly the confidence in the intellectual virtue how to have confidence is to have direct experience to practice it on our own so that we can gain the sattā not, uh, not a blind faith and uh, the sila the sila which is the five precepts as a good person not, I think not only the Buddhist as a good person if you uh, live with all these ethics um, you will lead your life happily and not not being harmful to others. Jaka, generosity. As you said rightly, this time we really need uh, to have generosity towards others because others may be uh, in a difficult situation because of the COVID-19, they may be out of job or whatever. If we could share whatever we can, I think that would be good. And as I understand, for the jaka, 
you have to give without any expectation, right? You just give uh, dana and the uh, panya or the wisdom. Wisdom will lead you to be on the right path, to understand what is wholesome and what is not wholesome. What is wholesome is kusala, to keep on doing and maybe anything that is unwholesome, a kusala, to avoid. So um, if we can follow that four teachings of Karawasa Dhamma, as you said, we will have happiness. So thank you very much once again. We hope that we could invite you again during the Vasa to give other Dhamma on other teachings of the Buddha. Thank you for the blessing. Satu, 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 satu.